Always great catching up with my next guest, Nate Maness, who's going to be back in action against Jimmy Flick, UFC Fight Night, June 15th. Nate, how's it going, man? Everything is good, man. Training's going well. Dieting's going well. Uh, happy to be on the show again. Yeah, happy to talk to you, man. I know you were supposed to fight in February. Uh, you had to you know, withdraw from that. Uh, what took you out of that fight for people who might not know? Uh, bad knees, man. <laughs> uh, I would like to get that one done. Uh, I think that was Axum. Uh, maxim something like that i know he's an undefeated guy so that would have been a good one for me but uh feeling good for this next one yeah for sure it looked like you got plenty of notice for this fight when did you find out uh, i found out 12 weeks before the event so um i think we're five weeks away now so i've had a pretty good training camp in already yeah no no absolutely and, and i gotta mention it just because you posted it on your on your facebook last week everything okay i know you got into a bit of an accident last week with your car uh, yeah, yeah. We had a uh, four car pile up. Uh, wasn't my fault. Uh, they actually totaled the car out. So insurance is paying for everything and uh, I get to get a new ride. So it really ain't too big of a deal. <laughs> okay, gotcha. And I imagine doctors say everything's a-okay and all that. Every everything's good there? Yeah, yeah. Everything is good. Yeah, it could have okay. been a lot a worse. Any worries though? though? Cause I mean, again, when you get in a car accident, did it go through your head? Maybe I might have to withdraw from this fight? Uh, I, I know I've heard people say like your body gets real sore two or three days after it's been about a week now. So I'm feeling pretty good about it. I've been training. The body feels good. So, so no problem. Let's talk about Jimmy flick. Uh, this is a really, really fun matchup. Just knowing both of your personalities and everything. Um, and then also just the style fight in general. How do you feel like you match up against him here? Uh, I got a lot of respect for Jimmy. Um, uh, he's a tough, tough dude. Uh, I know how hard he's going to be to get out of there. Um, uh, Man, he's getting beat up in some of these fights, and he figures out a way to win. Uh, I think I can relate to that better than uh, most. Uh, yeah. So I, I expect us both to get into a dog fight. He's going to be trying to submit me. I'm going to be trying to knock him out, and uh, we'll see what happens. Training camp, anything different for this one, or is it usual cast of characters? Who are you working with? Where are you training? Uh, what, what's, what's camp look like heading into this fight? Uh, yeah, pretty much uh, the same routine, man. Uh, I got tag MMA and nice guy submission. Uh, nice guy. You know, I got plenty of black belts up there. Jesse Ray Childry, uh, David Overfield, all those guys. Um, we got a bunch of new amateurs that have been coming up. So I've been getting a lot of bodies, getting a little bit of teaching in. Uh, I think that kind of helps your technique too when you're having to break down some positions for other people. Um, but other than that, man, everything feels good. Uh, the cardio is going good. The weight cut's going well. I'm excited about this one. I think I'm going to really make a statement in this one and uh, break into that top 15. Is it one of those things too, where you sort of focus more on your skill set and not so much on the opponent? Or do you like when you do camps, do you specifically work for an opponent? Uh, you know, when the fight's coming up? Yeah, we'll throw a, a couple of wrinkles in here and there. I know Jimmy has hit nine arm triangles or something like that. So, you know, we're going over just the very basics of the defenses, um, how to stay out of some of those positions. Uh, Jimmy even likes to lock them up, you know, standing. So he brings a different little wrinkle into things. Um, so we're definitely game planning for that. I, I think you'd be silly to ignore the the things that he brings to the table that he's really good at. Um, you mentioned the cut going well. Uh, anything different for for the weight cut? How's all that going? Uh, I've just been doing more cardio, man. Uh, I've been getting <laughs> in a lot of sprints. I, I love fighting in the summertime, getting to get outside and do some different kind of you know cardio stuff, hill sprints. I actually just got back from doing hill sprints this morning. Uh, so just little things like that, man. Uh, you get some sunshine, you get to get outside and go, and it makes it a lot easier to get the weight off. What about like eating and stuff? Do you have to eat fairly clean or like how does that work for, for getting the weight down? Uh, I've actually been eating more than I have my last two fights at 125 and the weight's just really been falling off. Um, so maybe I've been cutting it a little too hard these last couple of fights. Uh, you know, I'm still trying to figure out exactly what my body wants at 125. Um, but yeah, I've been eating as good as ever and, and I feel really good and I can make weight here in the next week or two. Do you make your own meals or do you use like a meal prep? Like how do you go about doing that for the cut? Yeah, the uh, PI nutritionists, they send uh, factor meals in every Friday. Um, I think we get like 14 to 16 meals, you know, every seven days. So uh, plenty of food, all clean, um, good protein, things like that. Uh, I have no complaints at all. It really takes the, uh, you know, the cooking and cleaning, and, you know, that, that can really wear you down when you're already tired from two a days and running and all this stuff. So it makes it really easy for us. Your corner, will that look different? Who's going to be in the cage with you? Uh, Brad Cummings, my head coach from Tag MMA, David Overfield, the black belt from Nice Guy Submission. And then I always have my uh, uncle, Aaron Houston, come down from North Carolina. Uh, he's kind of just my yes man, my hype man, uh, makes me feel comfortable in there. Uh, that's the squad, man. We're ready to go. How's this fight playing out? How do you see it going down on June 15th? Man, I'd be lying to you if I didn't say that I'm going to walk forward. He's going to cover up, and I think I'm going to put him away. Um, he gets rocked every fight, and, I, you know, not just kind of – Daisy, I mean, he's out there doing the dance kind of rocked. Uh, people put their hands on him. I'm going to do the same thing. Um, I know he, he had an interview not too long ago, and uh, 
He said, I, I stay on the ground when I get taken down. I'm not really sure how that plays a part. He's not a high-level wrestler. Um, even people like uh, Malcolm Gordon, he pretty much just tripped, and, you know, Jimmy took his back. You know, I, I don't really see him taking people down like Umar or Tagir, these people that have taken me down. Um, you know, I stuffed almost all of Tony Gravely's takedowns. I think Tony's a way better wrestler than Jimmy Flick is and a bigger guy. Uh, I don't think he's going to be able to take me down. I'm going to walk forward, uh, put my hands on him, and I think I'll put him away. You had a couple more fights left in your contract. What's the latest on uh, on, on your UFC contract? Uh, this is the last fight on my um, second contract. So uh, they want to see what happens in this fight. So hopefully get that win, get another knockout bonus, and uh, resign. What did you think of the uh, main event, UFC 301? That's your division, Pantoja, Urseg. Uh, Urseg, you know, made it close. Uh, I was curious what you thought of that fight and how you scored it. Some people felt like Urseg did enough. I actually had a wedding to go to that night. I missed it. I was trying to uh, catch up. Uh, I know a lot of people said that Ursag probably won the fight, which is very surprising to me. Uh, Pantoja looks about as complete as you can be at this weight class. Uh, so I definitely have to go back and watch it. Okay, no worries. I like the honesty on that one. And, you know, kind of seeing what Ursag did, and, and I know timing played a big role in that, but, you know, a guy like yourself who I know, you know, a couple fights now at, at flyweight, like, do you kind of look at the potential of, like, how quickly you could get a title shot? It seems like the division is kind of wide open right now. I know there's a few contenders, but you've got guys like, you know, Moreno who, you know, fought for the belt. you got Davis and Figueroa out of the weight class. you got a couple other things going on. Do you kind of look at, like, I, I know you're the focus is on Jimmy Flick, but, you know, you get the win here. Just seeing how quickly a guy like Ursig, who's only had three fights, get a title shot, that must feel a bit encouraging to you in the division. Uh, yeah, definitely. Uh, I think the top three or four, you know, those guys will be up there for a long time. But as far as after that, man, the division's wide open. And, uh, you know, Pantoja's already beat most of these guys. So uh, I think you have maybe uh, Amir Albazi and uh, Muhammad Makayev. I'm sure they'll get their shot. Uh, that gives me plenty of time to really get into the top 15 and get some knockouts and uh, make my way up there. It's definitely wide open, and I'm definitely looking at that. Nate, thanks for doing this. We're looking forward to the fight. It is UFC Fight Night, June 15th. If there's anyone you want to thank, any sponsors, any social media you want to mention, I'll give you the last word. Uh, yeah, I'd like to thank God, first and foremost, um, Pat, Rise Sports Management Group, uh, Tag MMA, Nice Guy Submission. Uh, I got my list of sponsors here. Uh, being in Construction, uh, Team Lynn at Expressway Ford, Fisher Total Maintenance, Max Custom Completions, Lux Motors, Takaholics. Black Label Custom Firearms. I appreciate it, all you guys. Let me train full time, and uh, we'll make you proud June 15th.